Good evening and welcome to this forum for the Cass County Presiding Commissioner sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Kansas City, Jackson, Clay, and Platte Counties, and with members in Cass County too. I'm Cheryl Barnes and I'm a member of this league. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization and our membership is open to everyone. We neither screen nor endorse candidates. Our mission is to empower voters and to support our democracy. We envision a democracy where every citizen has the knowledge, the right, the desire, and the confidence to participate. We are here for this voter education event to provide an opportunity to listen as the candidates present their positions. Voters have submitted questions via email at forumquestions at lwvkc.org up to an hour ago. Uh, the candidates' terms are for four years. We welcome and appreciate these candidates, Bob Houston, and Barbara Robertson. I'd like for you all to know the other league members volunteering with me tonight include Elizabeth Dar, our timer, Stancy Sonderstrom, our Zoom board tech host, and the forum's chair, Anitra Steele. Our legislative forum co coordinator is Anitra. This forum will be recorded and available and archived on the league's webpage, lwvkc.org. The candidates will order We'll answer each question in a random order with two candidates that will be back and forth that um, we've shared with candidates. Each will have 90 seconds to respond to the questions. Candidates, please answer the question asked and stick to the topic. There will be no rebuttals, but you can go back to an issue during your closing remarks for which you're allotted two minutes. We'll hear from the candidates now. Okay, and the first question is, what job does the presiding commissioner do? And we'll start with you, Mr. Houston. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Um, as a current presiding commissioner, uh, our main job as the presiding commissioner and the commission in whole is to approve the budget once a year. And we have certain departments under that budget that we control. Um, there are 18 other office holders in the county. Uh, they control their own departments. The commission has very little say over them after the budget is done. So uh, we control the budget for uh, Road and Bridge, the codes department, the health department, and the maintenance for the facilities within the county. And that's the uh, most of the control that we have throughout the whole county. And those, those four or five departments control uh, a majority portion of the budget. But uh, all the other elected officials uh, are in control of their own departments and commissioners has very little say on how they run their departments. They're elected just like we are and uh, they're allowed to run them how they see fit and answer to the public like we do. Thank you. Ms. Robertson, would you like to elaborate on the job of the presiding commissioners? Well, I think um, in addition, obviously, to, to what Bob already has experience in, um, the presiding commissioner is kind of that unifying force around the commission, around the county, um, and is responsible for getting those citizens involved and engaged in county government and getting their feedback and dealing with that. Thank you. Um, Ms. Robertson, we'll start with you. Um, what are the most important tasks for Cass County that you would like to see completed in the next four years? In the next four years? Um, I think the very biggest one is um, trust and respect and confidence restored to the County Commission. Um, there's been some bumps along the road. And I think a lot of people are that I've been talking to are uh, very dissatisfied with the way some things have been handled and they've lost confidence in what the commission does. I think a lot of them don't understand what the commission does. I think better communication and more transparency are the very top um, issues that need to be addressed. Beyond that, um, obviously infrastructure and public safety, roads and bridges are always an issue, but public safety, including health and um, safe libraries, safe voting, that's that's all important too. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done and it's gonna take the engagement of everybody to do that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shibam? Yeah. 
So I believe in the next four years, you know, one of our biggest opportunities, as Barbara was saying, was our health department. That's why we're getting ready. We just opened a brand new health department. Uh, we've increased the funding there. Public safety uh, is always a great concern. And if you look at the last three years on the budget, we've increased them several millions of dollars. And if you talk to the sheriff here in the, uh, in the county, he would agree with us that uh, we consider that a top priority in our county is roads and public safety. I believe that's our two biggest concerns right there. Uh, you know, there's always gonna be issues with roads, absolutely. Um, you know, the price of petroleum and everything, when that goes up, it, the, the cost of doing roads goes up and there's always only a limited amount of money that can use, but uh, looking at roads and public protection, that's our two top priorities in the county that we're gonna to continue to work on. Um, okay, let's talk about roads a little bit and we'll start with you, Bob. With the improvement of I-49 in North Cass County from County Line Road to North Cass Parkway, what is a long range plan to widen or provide a better access from State Line Road to 291 Highway? So uh, we're talking about two different issues here so far. 155th to Cass Parkway, uh, we collaborated with the city of Raymore and the city of Belton. Uh, all three of these entities work together with MoDOT to, uh, uh, we've committed $3 million from the county, Raymore committed three, Belton committed three, we worked together. And actually we got a funding bill that's gonna pay 100% to widen that from three lanes all the way from 155th, all the way to uh, Cass Parkway. Now, 155th, which is County Line Road up there to Kurzweil and beyond, uh, there's three different owners that, you know, the city of Belton has a section of it, the county has about a mile of it, and the city of Raymore has a mile of it. Uh, we've reached out to the city of Raymore. Uh, Belton just did some improvements. We did a few improvements up there, but uh, that's a heavily trafficked, uh, traveled road. Uh, if anyone's ever been on at five o'clock, it needs a lot of help. And we're, we're in uh, talks right now with both cities to see what the long range plan on that could be. And also Jackson County butts up to that road also. So uh, Lee Summit at the very end, but uh, it's gonna have to be a collaborative effort all together uh, to fix that road. Your comments on improving North Cass County line, North County line road to North Cass Parkway. County. the long range plan to widen or provide better access. That's for me. Yes. Oh, sorry, same you're question. freezing same, a little I'm bit. I'm sorry, same question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, obviously, as Bob said, it's, it's incredibly heavily traveled. And with the growth of um, North Cass, it's only going to get worse. And it is going to take collaboration with every entity and looking at solutions um, and just see how it goes. But that it's got the potential to be 100% funded is fantastic news. Good, thank you. Um, let's turn to housing a little bit. How can commissioners work with cities to implement workforce or affordable housing rates? Cass County is a very wealthy county. Um, and it seems like housing is an issue for the lower income folks who live in Cass County. And we'll start with you, Barbara. Um, housing definitely is not affordable anywhere. Um, and I think it's going to take the county working with developers um, and maybe it's in tax abatements or incentives to actually give um, opportunities for affordable housing. Um, we're finding more and more people becoming homeless. We have no transitional housing available, no short-term housing available for people who are trying to get back up on their feet. And I think that's a major part of what's gonna have to be addressed. Um, not just that, but actually working with developers and making affordable housing um, a priority in Cass County. Thank you. Bob? Well, the, the county has no services for say, we don't own water districts, we do not own sewer districts. So it's hard for uh, the county to uh, uh, have any, uh, I call it high density housing, which would hopefully result in some uh, uh, easing of housing prices, rental prices. So that's why we have to work with the cities because they have the services that provide these facilities uh, to, to be able to build them. 
So, you know, as far as tax abatements for those, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. You know, we got homeowners that are buying houses and you want them to supplement these high density housings. And most of them are out of state developers are coming in. And if you give them abatements, whether they're 353s or chapter 100s, uh, they're not paying taxes and they still got kids going to our schools. So it puts a bigger pardon or burden on the families or own the single family homes. But somewhere in the middle, there needs to be something to help each other out to be able to uh, to, to be able to provide, provide some affordable housing for kids and families. Thank you. Um, Bob, we'll start with you on this one. Um, what criteria for accountability and transparency is used for mental health organizations that provide those services with county public funds? Could you repeat that question, please, Cheryl? Sure. What criteria for accountability and transparency is used for mental health organizations that provide those services with county public funds? So, you know, the county, um, until we receive the CARES Act money or the ARPA money, uh, we, we don't, we do not, none of the money that is brought to the county is given to those services. Um, you know, we have a couple of different taxing entities like CASCO, but as far as public monies, I'm not sure uh, what the question is on that because there's no county money that goes towards any psychological services or things like that. Now, when uh, COVID was here and we had CARES Act money, we did, uh, 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 give money to different psychological services because of the impact that COVID had on people on, on their mental ability and things like that. But on a regular basis, uh, the county is not given to uh, organizations like that. I see. Uh, thank you. Uh, Barbara? Is it's, something... absolutely it, it's absolutely essential, especially with the mental health challenges we're see seeing after COVID that we have parity with mental health as long, along with physical health. Um, and I think that's something that the commission needs to look at um, along with the health department is how do we get more parity um, between physical and mental health because one affects the other. And I think we help our citizens more if we pay attention to all their needs. Thank you. Well, let's uh, pursue this just a little bit more. And Barbara, we'll start with you on this one. Um, what would you use for guidance on county health decisions, like a public health director or science or, or, or what? What would you use for Both. guidance? Both. Um, the county health uh, department are the experts. Um, they've got the training. They've got the skill sets. Um, but I'd also look at best practices across the country, across the state. Um, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. And uh, my experience has been that um, mental health agencies are more than willing to work with each other to uh, help each other out and find those best practices to help the citizenry. Thank you. Bob? So, the, you know, the county health department, the uh, the director of that uh, also answers to the commission directly on that and gives recommendations on what they believe is uh, fair and appropriate for the county. Ultimately, the, the commission answers to the citizens of the county on the direction that they want to go with that. So, you know, although the health director gives us uh, certain recommendations and things, uh, we may listen to the, the uh, them on that on certain items. We will not. Uh, we believe that uh, personal responsibility and uh, uh, what you want to do in your own life and less government is is the way to go on that. So I think there's a there's a medium in between both those that needs to be taken. You don't turn over the wheel to uh, one one organization altogether. It needs to be a cooperative uh, entity working together. Thank you. Um, Do you support the county sheriff department working with federal law enforcement laws? Um, and Bob, we'll start with you on that one. So, I, you know, we support our sheriff's department 100%. I think if you talk to Sheriff Weber here in, in the uh, the county, that he will would agree with me 100% that we've been behind him on 100% or wherever they do on that. Uh, I believe that they support uh, the laws of the country. And uh, I'm sure he will continue to do that. But once again, that's his his uh, his choice on that. 
Uh, I'm sure he's going to do that. We're going to support him financially because that's the only control that we have over the sheriff's office is the budgetary. Thank you. Barbara? I would say yes, generally. I mean, the whole point of having departments is to let those, those people in charge of those departments, including the sheriff, um, do their jobs. If they step out of line or if something's unreasonable, then I think it's up to the commission to have a discussion. Thank you. Um, what gun re regulations need to be implemented in Cass County? And we'll start with you, Barbara. Could you repeat that, please? Sure. What gun regulations need to be implemented in Cass County? I don't know that you could do it county by county. It probably needs to be done by state. Um, I support the Second Amendment, but I also support safe gun laws and controls. And we need to make sure that the citizenry that should have guns and are trained to have guns use them in a responsible manner. I would love to see more education and more penalties for adults who do not lock up their guns and do not keep them safe and secure. We do not need children getting access to guns who have not been properly trained. We, we need better control over guns, but I don't want to take guns away from hunters and responsible gun owners. Gun owners. Uh, gun regulations for Cass County? So, you know, our, the Constitution of the United States is very clear on that. Um, it's our personal right to own guns. Uh, I believe that people that, uh, you know, as a hunter, avid hunter, uh, raised my kids as avid hunters, uh, taught them responsible gun ownership, gun gunmanship, and uh, believe that our Constitution protects those rights. I believe the county needs to stay out of it. Thank you. Um, Let's move to uh, building codes. Cass County uses the 2006 International Building Code. Although there are 2021 International Building Codes available that would help residents going forward to reduce greenhouse gases and save on energy costs. If elected, would you make this one of your goals? And we will start with you, Bob. So uh, looking at our county codes right now, I believe they're restrictive enough. Uh, once again, I believe government's there to protect uh, everyone out there, but uh, too much restriction, too much oversight, too much regulation makes it cost prohibitive for people to even build a house. You know, it's hard enough for young families to afford a house, but we go to put more regulations on that you have to do this or do that. It makes it uh, unaffordable, unattainable, and not practical. So, no, I would not support that. I see. Barbara, would you support the 2021 International Building Codes? I am not, I have not read through those, um, but we also know that climate change is here and it's changing our planet drastically. I've also heard from citizens who are already complaining about building codes and that uh, builders won't even come into Cass County because, there is, because of the restrictions. So maybe what needs to be done is looking at an overhaul and looking to see where things are too restrictive all over already, excuse me, and looking at how we can look to the future to save our county and save our planet. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a new 26% federal tax credit for installing solar panels on homes. Would you champion installing solar panels on Cass County homes? Why or why not? And Barbara, we'll start with you. I would certainly champion that. Um, but I think when people look and see that it is, I believe at this point, a $500 fee to install solar panels, I think that puts some people off of even starting that process. And that is a county fee. Um, I think absolutely anything and everything we can do to reduce energy costs um, should be promoted. Uh, up to that point, it is up to the individual homeowner. Thank you. 
Hemp up? Oh, champion I solar panels? I don't know if I'd be a champion, but I believe that's a personal choice. I have several friends that have them on their houses. I have several friends that would never use them. They, you know, they're going to heat by firewood or uh, whatever means they want. So uh, I believe that's a personal choice on the family and the government doesn't need to be involved with that. Okay. Um, would you tell us why you value voting as a sacred right of American citizens and how you demonstrate that via your actions? And Bob, we start with you. Okay, I, I got about half that question. Me too. I've, let me start. It is for Bob. Um, just we'll start with Bob this time. Please tell us why you value voting as a sacred right of American citizens and how you demonstrate that via your actions. OK, so, uh, you know, voting is right there along the Second Amendment It's guaranteed by our Constitution. That's one of the, the premises of our whole country is founded on is to allow people to vote. Everyone that is that is qualified to vote should be allowed to vote no matter what. Uh, whether we agree with them or not, there's always differences, even within families, there's differences, but to be allow, not allow certain people to vote is not right. So you need to allow everyone to vote for this. Uh, I believe the commission working with the, the county, uh, the clerk who, who puts on the elections, we've always fully funded or given enough money to provide accurate, correct elections, easy access, uh, they're available for phone calls. So I believe in our county that the election process goes very well and it's available for anyone that really wants to vote. They can vote here. Thank you. Barbara? How do you demonstrate um, that you value voting as a sacred right via your actions? Um, voting is the definition of America. It is, it is part of what makes us Americans is a free and fair elections. And absolutely everyone should be able to vote, should be encouraged to vote, should be, you know, ideally a um, very informed voter. I have worked um, for years on voter education, voter registration, and I'm just constantly amazed at the number of people who don't think their vote counts or don't understand the voting process or don't understand that they have to re-register when they move. Um, I've worked very hard to try and change that in Cass County. Voting is not just a sacred right. It is a responsibility of being a citizen. Thank you. Um... We'll start with you again, Barbara. Should we increase the number of polling places in Cass County to make it easier for people to vote? I don't know that it's um, a huge problem in most in most areas right now. That is that is something that I would have to rely on the county clerk to to say. You know, we're we need we need more places. Um, lines are too long. Given the really abysmal turnout of Cass County registered voters in the last several elections, I don't see that as being a problem right now. If we could get above, I think the last figure I saw was around 27% of eligible voters actually voted. If we could get up into the 50s and 60s, yeah, we're going to absolutely have to have more voting places. But First, people have to get out and vote. Sure. Bob, more polling places? <laughs> well, I believe that we have enough right now that we're sufficient, but uh, that goes back on the county clerk. Uh, we have no say on that. The county clerk determines whether and, and where the voting, the precincts are. If he needed more, we'd absolutely help him fund those. But uh, I think so far, the last several years, last 17 years, I've been involved in the county that uh, it's not been a problem here. Okay, thank you. Um, what, what is the plan to roll out the Missouri opioid settlement? And Bob, we'll start with you. Okay, so the county uh, signed on to the opi opioid uh, lawsuit uh, even the year before I took presiding commissioner. Um, I think the settlement that Cass County will receive 
Um, the last that I heard was six months ago would be about $150,000. Most of that money would be geared towards probably our health department and law enforcement services because uh, the health department and the law enforcement services are the two entities that, that uh, held the brunt on that. You know, the, uh, the police are the first people to call and they're the first responders to be there. Uh, but once we got the money, I'm sure we'd sit down with uh, the different organizations involved, whether it be uh, psychological services, uh, the, the hospital here in the counties or the health department and just kind of brainstorm where that money would be best spent because that's what the money was for is to, to help uh, offset some of the costs that we've had with the opioid problems. Thank you. Barbara, the plan to roll out the opioid settlement well, again, um, $100,000 sounds like a lot of money, but for something as big as the crisis we're in, especially with the fentanyl issues, um, it's not nearly enough. Again, you'd have to go with, um, that would be the responsibility of the health department with input from uh, law enforcement. One thing I would love to see is um, readily available Narcan in in public places in you know easily accessible stores uh it's proven in in the st louis area to be a literally a lifesaver to a lot of people and i would like to see that education and the availability spread in cass county thank you um Kind of jumped the gun on me uh for the next question is uh, providing is providing narcan um, the opi opioid overdose treatment being considered to be provided to the police departments and mental health facilities. Um, and we'll start with you, Barbara. You could just continue on that line of thought. Uh, yes, they should have it. They should be the first ones who have it. Um, I would also include um, safe spaces. Uh, there should be somebody trained in libraries. There should be somebody play, uh, trained in places like Quick Trip. Uh, some some kind of training open to public that are around people a lot um, and can respond appropriately, not unlike an AED machine. Thank you. Um, so. I, I believe it is provided to the police forces, at least at the county there. I would have to double check with Sheriff Weber, but if it's not, absolutely it should be. Uh, our first responders, uh, you know, I know the, the medical side, the EMTs and the fire departments have it, but I'm not sure that our sheriff's departments don't already have that available to them, uh, but I'd have to double check on that. But absolutely, that is a, 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 a major, major need. Thank you. Um, we'll switch gears here. Um, would you enter into discussions with the Kansas City Transportation Department, KCATA, uh, about providing bus transportation throughout Cass County? So on the ATA, um, you know, those would be coming to the city of Belton, city of Raymore. If they would want us involved in that, we would. Uh, all the businesses are located in those, you know, those two, the largest amount of businesses are located on those. So they need to have the largest amount of say, you know, they're represented by their city councils or aldermen. And if they would want us involved, we would be, but uh, I can't imagine that KCATA would want to run to Cass County and the rural areas. There's, there's no uh, businesses located there. So, but we would support Belton, Raymore, Harrisonville, whoever would, would want to be involved in that, at least sit down and have the talks with them. Absolutely. Thank you. Barbara, KCATA. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest barriers in Cass County right now to people having jobs is actually being able to get to jobs. And that would take a lot of discussion between um, the KCATA on, and cities of Belton and Raymore, but I would even stretch it down 49 and allow, um, if there's jobs, maybe it's, maybe it's a twice a day shuttle somehow to get people at least to general areas so they can go and work. And with um, all the expansion and all the new warehouses coming um, and the second shifts coming or third shifts coming uh, to Clay Como, I think it's absolutely essential we have some kind of public transportation in Cass County. Thank you. Um would you define for us the difference between Northern Cass County and Southern Cass County? And we will start with you, Barbara. 
Um, Northern Cass County is generally, uh, to my understanding, um, considered to be Belt and Raymore. But I think you can also pull in Freeman and um, Peculiar it, to include that kind of North Cass County area. And then kind of Harrisonville and South would be South Cass County. Bob? North and South Cass County? Well, there's a huge difference between North and South County. Uh, you know, we're fortunate here in this county to have, I, I say, the most, the best worlds here. You know, up north there, we have a lot of different businesses and, and restaurants that you can go to. But when you get down south of Harrisonville, uh, my wife's families are all uh, farmers down here. Lots of family are farmers down here. And uh, it's a different world on that. It's a uh, uh, private right. It's a uh, uh, personal property. It's uh, a lot of great things in our county. And, and we're very fortunate to have both those in our county. And they're both very important. And they both are very distinctly different. And uh, it takes a person that can represent both sides, but realize how good it is for our, not only our county, but our state that our county is like this. Thank you. Um, I'd like for you to take a couple of minutes, well, actually 90 seconds, to brag about what you bring to the party like why you make a great presiding commissioner. Um, what is it, you know, in your background, like a CPA, lawyer, whatever, um, and, and how that relates to what you think the most important part of the job. And Bob, we'll start with you. Well, thanks, Cheryl. You know, I think I bring a lot of things. To, first of all, being born and raised here uh, in Cass County my entire life, worked here my entire life, uh, married a girl from South Cass, Cass County who's lived here her entire life, raised two children, uh, have two granddaughters, or excuse me, two grandsons, uh, two great son-in-laws. Uh, we, we value family. We value commitment. Um, there's so many great things about Cass County. It's a great place to live, great place to work. It's safe. There's so many good things going for this county. Um, you know, I've sold real estate over 30 years in this county. I've also run small businesses and worked for bigger businesses. So I have the budget uh, uh, history to be able to take care of the county. If you look at the last three years in the county, we've paid off a lot of debt. We've paid off bonds early. Uh, we're setting in better position now than we've set in a long, long time. And I believe it takes responsible leadership. Someone that's lived here understands uh, the ins and outs of not just the, the government, but the ins and outs of, of the county. And, and, you know, graduating from high school here and my kids are here, uh, we're into this this whole county here and, and uh, we have so much family and friends here and, and we always hear what's going on. And I think people feel like I'm approachable and come talk to me about issues and I'm always available. So, you know, we have a great, great thing going on here at Cass County. I want to continue to make it a safe county. You know, do we have problems? Absolutely. Do we need to work on things? Absolutely. But I don't know anyone out there that is 100% correct on everything or 100% wrong on anything. But as a, your presiding commissioner, I guarantee you we'll lead our county for the next four years and we'll, we'll continue to be one of the top 10 fastest counties uh, growing in the, in the county and the state here. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. You're going to have two minutes to close in a little bit, but um, right now I just want to know what your qualifications are for the job. <laughs> Barbara, well, I you. have been, a, okay, um, I've ahead. been a resident of Cass County for 12 years, um, moved, at, moved here from South Kansas City, so I didn't move very far, but I moved here because I wanted a little bit more land and a little bit more stars in the sky. Um, I have a huge varied experience. I have been in leadership roles and supervisory roles my entire life. Um, I've got experience in accounts receivable, accounts payable. Um, I've done, I'm basically a Jill of all trades. Um, I've spent a lot of time in small business and nonprofit and have had to work with government entities and other leaders and foundations and a whole host of other stakeholders to get things done in a very tight budgetary uh, area. Um, I'm excited about Cass County. I want to see what it can be. And I think I can bring uh, uh, multiple multiple skills and new eyes to uh, make Cass County even better. Okay, thank you. And I will start with you with uh, Barbara with this next question. And that is uh, Cass County does not have any shelters other than for domestic violence 
What is the plan to build and operate homeless shelters in Cass County? There needs to be a plan. And this is uh, where we need to work with stakeholders from the cities uh, that, that already have those in place. I'm sure they'd love to expand to Cass County because we desperately need it. We need transitional housing um, to give people a hand up, not necessarily a handout, but we've got way too many um, homeless on our streets. We've got way too many people who have various addictions and have fallen on hard times and just need a roof over their head for a while and help. And it's our responsibility to help all of our citizens become uh, more contributing members to society than they already are. But yes, housing is absolutely essential. Thank you, Bob. So yeah, there, there is very little to none uh, housing support for uh, homeless individuals. And we all see it around the community. You know, it's, it doesn't matter if it's in Belton or Garden City or Drexel, we all have that. We all see it driving up I-49, people asking for money. There's a lot of mental health issues going on there, a lot, a lot of drug dependency issues. And I think it needs to be addressed as a whole community, not just the county or the cities. It's, this is a whole state issue. You go anywhere across, not just Missouri, the country, and we see this issue everywhere. And as a society, we need to do a better job on, on providing something for these folks. Could you talk about your plan for that? So currently right now, you know, we'd have to probably work with our churches and our uh, nonprofit organizations that uh, would want to want to form shelters for these people and see if we could be of assistance of it. But, uh, you know, it comes down to funding, too. There's only so much money that there is out there. If people would be willing to fund that, you know, through uh, donations or, or volunteerism or uh, things like that, uh, you know, the county dollars, they're kind of spoke for is when, they're, when they get approved, whether it's for road and bridge or law enforcement, you can't siphon off dollars to use for, for projects like this. So there would have to be funds that would be dedicated through it, whether it be another tax or through raising a private foundation uh, dollars on that. That's it, okay, thank you. Uh, Missouri has more roads and bridges than any other state in the United States. We turned over many of our roads to the state, but the counties still have some. Could you talk about the number of miles you have in Cass County to take care of and, and what's involved with that? Uh, in terms of the budget and in terms of uh, what portion of the budget it is. And Bob, we'll start with you. Sure. So, you know, the, the county runs on a quarter cent sales tax on the road and bridge. We also have a levy. Uh, roughly $3.2 million comes in on the levy, 3.3, 3.4 for the sales tax. So, you know, the county is 777 square miles. There's roughly 1,340 uh, road miles, road service miles out there, of which I think 450 some are chip and sill or blacktop. The rest of the remainders are blacktop or excuse me, are gravel roads. Um, I'll tell you right now, you know, at the five or six million dollars there, that's not enough money for the roads. Uh, it, it never will be at the quarter cent sales tax on that. Even with it growing like it is, the cost of uh, materials and labor and help to take care of these roads have just uh, skyrocketed. You know, you're paying more to pump. Well, when you pay more to pump, you're paying more to take care of the roads also. Uh, you know, there needs to be a long-term solution to this. The state of Missouri is struggling. Every, every state in the union is struggling with that on the road because it costs so much money to take care of these things. Um, you know, rather than dragging, pulling more money into the budget, uh, we're going to probably have to look at down the road another, another funding source, whether it's a gas tax or redistributing some of the money that's in the county and other things. But majority of our money goes to roads and the law enforcement. And that's the two things we need to take care of. Thank you. Barbara? Roads and well, bridges. There, there are no easy solutions, as Bob said. The costs uh, keep going up. I think the last figure I heard was... Oh, and I, I may have this totally wrong, but it was like a million dollars for a mile of road, um, which is just mind blowing and ridiculous, but you can't control those costs. Um, 
Missouri has some of the lowest gas taxes in the nation and something is going to have to be done. Um, and, and, and I think we're going to have to look at innovative solutions as a state. Um, but there's no way that this is that we can keep doing what we're doing. Um, and I don't know what the solution is. I think it's going to take a lot of people doing a lot of brainstorming and trying to figure it out. Okay, thank you. Um, Barbara, we'll come back to you. Um, I was reading that there is a kind of road surface made out of recycled plastic that lasts longer than asphalt. Would the county be willing to uh, entertain some uh, innovative ways to see if they can make roads last longer um, that would also work to help with the environment to reduce the amount of plastic going in the um, waste stream? Um, I am willing to look at anything that reduces our our plastic or reuses our plastic, which right now is basically unrecyclable, um, and would help with our roads. So I'm all about looking outside the box. So I would I would be willing to entertain any good ideas that would help us accomplish two two things at once. Thank you, Bob. Well, absolutely. You know, we'd be looking at any any uh, any way to recycle and, and to use on the roads uh, just because of the cost of petroleum items. I mean, we're looking at used tires shredded right now and and actually asphalt shingles being reground. We've looked at both those options uh, when they first start out. It's fairly, fairly reasonable. But as more people want to buy them, uh, they start charging more for them. So uh, we're always open to look at different options to make it more economical to, uh, to prepare to pre prepare the road services. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, are there any Cass County departments that need diversity attention? And Bob, we start with you with that one. So first of all, um, I think, oh, Bob or Barbara? Bob. Sorry. Bob, no worries. <laughs> you know, first of all, our county is an EOC equal, equal opportunity employer. Absolutely, we we'll always look at that. Um, you know, the application process for every office, each office source in charge of that. We have an HR department, but anyone is always encouraged. And, and when you want anyone that wants a job to apply, absolutely. Thank you. Barbara? Um, I would love to see more diversity in Cass County um, because I don't see very much now. I think we need more women. I think we need people of color. Um, and I would say starting with the sheriff's department would be a great place to uh, try and recruit um, minorities. Thank you. The um, Cass County Jail is for men only and has 136 beds, holds 136 men. Um, would it make sense for Cass County to work with Kansas City since they need a jail uh, to look at building a different facility, a bigger facility that would serve Northern Cass County, which is where the major part of the population is. And Barbara, we'll start with you on that one. Um, I'm not sure what facilities are available in Grandview or South Kansas City for women, but it makes perfect sense, um, especially if neither area has a population for women. Um, that, that maybe we can both save money and, and provide that service. It'd certainly be worth exploring. Bob? So, uh, so the Cass County Jail does house women. Uh, they have different blocks for women and men on that. Uh, we're actually expanding the, the last two cell blocks uh, to increase our capacity on that because uh, we're going to start uh, housing federal prisoners to help offset the cost from the, the state. We're supposed to be reimbursed from the state so much per prisoner, which we haven't received the full amount in years. So help, to help offset that, we, we're going to start housing federal prisoners, but we house, we house both men and women in the county jail. Thank you. I guess I got wrong information from my reading. I appreciate that correction. Um, we have uh, just about exhausted all of the questions. Um, unless there's something that you wish I had asked, uh, and if you would respond to that, like you would like to be sure that we know this about Cass County and, and um, that would be important for voters. So 
Uh, Bob, we'll start with you on that. So, you know, I think Cass County is, uh, it's been good to me and my family. Um, I think if you want to come down here and you want to raise a family and, and be safe and uh, have places to shop and, and uh, enjoy life and not have to worry about crime or anything like that, it's a great place to go. I think if you want to uh, uh, continue to fund the police department, con continue, continue to uh, work on the roads and try to improve them as much as we can, uh, knowing that we're not perfect on everything, but we try and we always have an open door to talk to people. I think if you need that and want that, that uh, I would be the person you need to vote for. Okay. And Barbara, with the question that you wish we had asked. Um, I wish you had asked, um, what would you, what would your vision be for Cass County and um, for the future? And mine would be looking at Cass County as it is, which is uh, a marvelous mix of rural and basically suburban. We're growing at an exponential rate and Northern Cass is pretty much uh, now a becoming a bedroom community of the greater Kansas City area. Um, businesses are coming in and to the area and to the region, but Cass County isn't well equipped to help citizens take advantage of those new jobs with um, support services, um, finding affordable rent, um, transportation. And that is the kind of thing that I would like to see is uh, helping Northern Cass take advantage, and Southern Cass for that matter, um, take advantage of all these great things that are happening in our region and in our area and help them succeed and help our area grow and be one we can be proud of. Thank you. Well, I think it's time for your two minute closing remarks. So, um, we appreciate the audience tuning in tonight and uh, the, the uh, program will be available on the league's website, lwvkc.org uh, and your uh, friends and family and, and supporters will be able to take a look at um, what you've had to say tonight. So we appreciate your, your time and uh, your willingness to be a part of the candidate forum. Um, and Bob, we'll start with you to, for your closing remarks then it'll be two minutes. Okay, thank you, Cheryl. First of all, I'd like to thank you and, and your group there that allowed us to come on here tonight and speak and give some answers to some tough questions out there. Always appreciate the opportunity to let people understand where we stand and what we stand for. It's very important in our country. It's very important that we get the chance to vote. Uh, but being a lifelong Cass County resident and, and marrying a, a, my wife of almost 30 years here and raising our kids and, and our grandkids around here, uh, we really uh, love this county. We want to see it grow. Uh, we want to make sure we had, don't lose our roots. So also, you know, by providing uh, affordable housing for people and making sure that we have all the things that people are looking for uh, in a community, absolutely we need to grow. But we also want to maintain our, our way of life here in the county. You know, just because we're next to Cass or uh, Kansas City doesn't mean that we have to take all the, the things that comes with growth like that. We want to make sure we're in a safe community. We want to make sure that we have the, the services that we want and, re and require in a community like this. And I think Cass County has done a fantastic job of that. I think the officers in Cass County have done a good job. We're going to continue to uh, fund our uh, police protection, our sheriff's office. We're going to continue to fund our roads and look at better ways to provide services. So I think we've done a great job. I appreciate it. And I look forward to four more years. Thank you. Barbara, your two minutes, your closing remarks. I first want to thank the League of Women Voters for doing this forum. Um, I love informed citizens, and this is the perfect forum to be able to do it. And I do thank you, because um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. I want to make Cass County better. Um, it's I moved here for a reason, um, because it had all the aspects of things I, I was looking for, not far from the city, but out in the country and a varied um, I, and, and drive a little further south and I could be further out in the country. Um, but to make Cass County better, we all have to do better. And it starts with better communication and it starts with transparency. And what is happening in the county, the decisions that are being made and tons and tons of input from the citizens. 
our county is more than roads and bridges and potholes. Um, it's so much more. We can be a county that is desir desirable when we take care of all of our residents. We've got some of the highest taxes in the metropolitan area and um, crime actually is going up, especially in North Cass. Um, but we have no shelter, no wraparound services for people experiencing homelessness or the threat of homelessness. Um, we don't have the most basic transportation for people to get from one part of the county to another, much less um, access to metro-wide transportation. We're growing at, at such a large rate and we have to take care of all of our citizens. That's our responsibility as commissioners. And I think I've got the varied skill set to make um, those connections and help Cass County be all that she can be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you candidates for your willingness to participate in the forum. Uh, the recording will be available soon on the league website audience please take time to share the insight you have gained tonight with your family and friends and be sure to get out to the polls and vote on tuesday november 8th be sure to check your voter reg registration and update it if you've moved or if your name has changed and note your polling location which also may have moved and this year uh, beginning this with this election you'll need a photo id to vote thanks so much and good night thank you Cheryl. thank you you're welcome thanks for joining us this was great Thank I you. learned a lot. <laughs> me too. Thank you. I, me too. Thank you.